Hi there. Welcome to the Predict Wind Currents webinar. So today we're going to talk about Predict Current, which is uh, our new uh, product. We've spent a couple of years uh, getting to this point uh, that we were able to release uh, this currents model. Uh, it's been a lot of work and a big investment, but we're very, very happy with uh, the outcome and you know think that what we have is something that hasn't been seen before um, and really you know lifts the bar for uh, tidal currents around the world and how you look at them and um, and and utilize them uh, for safety and uh, you know in yacht racing terms to use them for you know to your advantage so let's get let's get into it so like most of uh uh, the stuff that we have, you can view Predict Current or our Currents model uh, in any of our platforms. Uh, so we have the Predict Wind app and Forecast website. Uh, you can view the Currents maps in there. Uh, you need a standard or professional forecast subscription to view this feature, um, which probably reflects the amount of investment that we've put into getting this product uh, out. So yeah, we have the Predict Wind app, which you use at home, um, at the dock, at the beach, um, and yeah, as I say, the forecast website. You can also get this information in the offshore app. So you can download uh, all of our tidal current groups for wherever you are, and um, you can have your weather routing overlaid, and um, you know, use those grips in, in whichever way you please. Um, and even so far as if you wanted to put them into any other software, those uh, high resolution tidal grips, uh, all levels of uh, our tidal grips are there for you to download. So um, I know that, you know, sometimes there's, uh, you know, people like to do that. So, but you can view them in the offshore app, only in the Mac or PC version of the offshore app. Um, and that's which is the way it's always been for our tidal currents. They're very big files. Um, so yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what we've uh, what we've done here. <clears throat> so we have mapped basically the whole world, um, all of the coastlines, with uh, and and modelled them uh, and done tidal modelling. Um, it's yeah. There's 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 three main uh, three different resolutions that we offer that in, and um, they are four K, four hundred meters, and a hundred meter resolution. Now, you don't some places you don't really need the higher resolution, um, but the more complex places you, that you do, we in general we have modeled them. Uh, the 400 meter also does a very good job. Uh, it's still, you know, if we were talking about wind models, these would be extreme high resolution. Um, and for even for the in this uh, current uh, tidal currents modeling, it is very high resolution. So, uh, in case you don't know what resolution is, it's just the level of detail. So, the the smaller the the you know the the 100 meter, the more detail you get in the modeling. So, you know, little back eddies and things like that on a really small scale. So just to explain some of what goes into that, the uh, bathometry that goes into it, sometimes that's, um, you know, like 30 meter um, triangles they are actually, and we then put the output into uh, 100 meter um, resolution squares. So yeah, a lot of detail um, goes into that, a lot of computing power um, and a lot of um, science and, um, and time by uh, oceanographers to, to get us to this point. And so yeah, so here's just a little example of resolution. You can see here, this is the big picture. Uh, this is actually the English Channel. And then here we have <clears throat> Uh, the solent uh, coming out through the gap there and just so that more detail that when you zoom in that's kind of an example of the resolution uh, as I say we have covered a lot of the world um, and it's it's really impressive let's just flick over to the uh, tidal currents map 
Um, and you'll see here, you know, we've got most of the world there. And we have these white squares, red squares, and probably can't see them at the moment till I zoom in, but the purple squares. So the purple squares are 100 meter, red is the 400 meter resolution, white is the 4K. So we can turn off some to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, if I turn that off, I turn off the 4K, we zoom in a bit. Let's come up here. You look at the coast of the US and you'll see, <clears throat> you know, that there's places where we have the 100 meter and the 400 meter resolution. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some of these, yeah, areas, are, you know, have, uh, you know, pretty complex um, tidal situations. You know, uh, New York would be uh, definitely be one of those places and, um, you know, the Hudson River, et cetera. So very interesting. Um, how that all goes, as I say, we can um, turn off the 400 meters, see the, where we have all the 100 meters. It's worth coming and having a look at this map and seeing what is available in your area and then how you're going to use that to your best um, advantage, you know, and uh, whether that's relevant to you. I mean, here here in New Zealand, I didn't even, I didn't realize how far um, our 100 meter went in Auckland. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so come and have a look at this um, coverage map. <clears throat> All right, let's go and have a look at some tidal currents. I mean, uh, where am I? I'm in the sail routing. Let's go out of here and come down here to my currents maps. You'll see here I am in Auckland, uh, which is where I live. And uh, this is now. And you'll see we have the currents have turned on the edges so this is a feature that um, you probably would have heard uh, you know people talk about you know oh, the, the current turns on the on the edges first and uh, and that is true in general and you can see that an example of that here in Auckland uh, this is the area here where some of the America's Cup racing was done and then there's another one out here and um, you know we had modeling for this area for the America's Cup and um, and then this 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 map that you see here is an extension of that. Um, and if I just we are in the hundred meter resolution modeling here, and you'll see if I go if I go forward, you'll see that tide starts pushing out. And then if I go back in time, you'll see it was uh, coming in and very strong. And then as we go through the time, you'll see it starts to turn um, and go out. Now, an interesting feature here is if I scroll forward enough, uh, the 100 meter resolution only goes out for 24 hours. So we run that uh, twice a day and we extend that out for the 24 hours, um, mainly because the file sizes are so big and it uses a lot of, um, a lot of uh, computing power to, to do that. And yeah, so we scroll through and you'll see here, we will flick over the resolution once I get out of that 24 hour period. It'll be this, there we go, whoops. Yeah, there we are. So we've flicked over. And so I would suggest, and you see, we, you know, we, the 400 meters still doing a pretty epic job here. Um, and I'll just scroll through and you know, it's still doing a really, really good job. You'll see here on some of these edges, it's not doing quite as good a job at resolving some of these, um, you know, really near shore features, but the trends are very good. And um, if you have 400 meter resolution in your area, I would suggest coming in and having a look at uh, an area where there's the 100 meter res and sort of get your head around how some of the modeling works. Um, we can we can interpret these models much the way we would a wind model. So, you know, for example, you can see here, we have, I'll zoom in a bit on that. You know, we have a, comp uh, you know, a compression point here um, and, and where the tidal current is getting stronger same around here and then obviously in the lee there is you know less current so it's just the same as a wind model we can do that so if you 
you know, I had a, a, a laser sailor asking me about this the other day and, you know, where they were sailing, they had the 400 meter, which is, does, as I say, does an amazing job. And, um, but you can come in and have a look at how some of these, uh, you know, you might want to look at a, a, a contour map of the seafloor and just see if there's any great features that you might want to think about because you can interpret this model um, into this, into the uh, into the low, lower resolution. But yeah, the trends are there. You can visualize these trends and see what's going on. Um, you know, if I come back to now or even earlier today, where are we? You know, this is such a powerful feature if you want to go fishing and any kind of boating, really, uh, you know, power boating, uh, yacht racing. I mean, yacht racing, it can be a huge tactical advantage knowing what these currents are doing. Um, but, you know, even from a safety point of view, if I look at this here and I flick over to the wind map and you'll see there we have, um, you know, a pretty a reasonable south westerly here. Uh, and then I flick back to our current map and we've got that current coming in. The, the wind is blowing the opposite direction. I know because uh, I spent a lot of time on the water out here. This would be pretty bumpy. It would not be pleasant. Um, you know, that's not rocket science, but being able to visualize all this stuff. And there are places where it isn't necessarily what you think. And you can see where these eddies are and you can see where it is going to be calmer or less affected by the tide or you know, if you could get out of the current and into these eddies and, and whatnot. Let's just go and have another look at another location. Um, New York is one of my favorites. Um, it's super cool uh, what's going on here. Uh, you know, it's a really complex um, set of, uh, <laughs> set of uh, waterways here. And, you know, it's just really cool being able to see, you know, this 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 water flow and how it changes throughout the tidal cycle. You know, it's there's lots going on there, right? Like, look at this, this eddy here and, um, yeah, just really cool. I mean, I've spent a lot of time playing around with this. I find it really, really exciting. And, um, you know, there's so many cool things that you can do and, um, utilize this to have a have a better time on the water. Um, righty ho, let's go back and have a look at our weather routing. So there's a couple of things going on. So we could do power routing or sail routing. I would 100% be wanting to be using this if I was power routing, uh, just basically because, you know, how the current changes the wave state so much. Um, and, you know, this... The, the detail that we're seeing here, you're not really going to get in your uh, in your wave modeling um, at, at this level of detail. So this is something above and beyond that. And uh, very shortly, you are going to be able to see, you will get warnings when you've got wind against tide. Um, you know, we have wind against current warnings now, ocean currents, uh, but actually these tidal warnings are going to be, you know, pretty critical to maybe when you might leave for your trip or, um, you know, how are you going to manage it? Let's go to the sail routing. We'll click on download. And we're going to be able to view the uh, tidal currents against our weather route and have a look at it. As I say, they're not integrated into it yet. I think that's going to happen in the next week or two. Um, we will be merging the tidal currents and the ocean currents together because there's places where uh, the uh, ocean currents are actually more important or uh, stronger than the tidal currents, or the tidal currents don't have an, a, a, as big an effect. And so we're going to merge those together so that it actually, when the weather router uses it, it's using it uh, in the best way, you know, it's giving the most accurate output. So I've run a weather route there. Um, you know, we've, it looks like it's pretty straightforward because we've got a southwesterly. We did have a warning there. What was that? Roll. So it's going to obviously get pretty rolly. Uh, we would probably want to go and analyze this route, but that's not what we're here to look at. I just want to come over here and I've got I've opened up the model selector there and I can click on current and you will see, first of all, we have the uh, Mercator model is, is connected. And so there's all our 
ocean currents um, and we but we want to look at the tidal current uh, locally here so uh, you know nice in by the coast and you can see there uh, we've just got a little bit of uh, current running right at this moment and then if I march through that um, that route you'll see we actually have the current going with us much of the way there and then um, you know we can see over here which uh, if you're <laughs> from this part of the world you'll know uh, what it can be like over here uh, but you know we see we do have that that um, acceleration around that headland there and um, yeah it's interesting so yeah we do have our, our, our tidal currents we can view them against our weather routing uh, e either in the predict wind app or in the offshore app and we'll go and have a look at the offshore app now um, but yeah this is viewing these tidal currents with your weather routing is really a game changer you're going to be able to um, you know see things that you probably couldn't see before um, any coastal yacht racing you know super exciting being able to take advantage of the currents in this way and um, and add them into your overall strategy um, fishing I know you know stray lining being able to have the wind and the current together is exactly what you want what you want and um, you know the timing you know oh, when am I actually going to go fishing you know what, what day of the week can I have uh, you know, get the the change of light and the change of tide and the current running out or whatever you want to do. Um, you know, this is this is an amazing tool for you to do that. So I'll just stop sharing my screen there, and I will share again with the offshore app. So we are now in the Mac version of the offshore app, and you'll see here I've downloaded all my grubs. I could be on weather routing, uh, which is my wind, and I can change all my models and whatnot there. And then I can come down here to ocean data, and there is my tidal currents. So um, if I bring that forward to oops to now, um, and we can look at our tidal currents in here. And what I can do is I'll zoom out, because we basically just looked at this. I will zoom out. And you'll see here we have all these uh, squares. You know, the pink ones are the ones I've downloaded. The yellow ones are not selected. Um, so I haven't downloaded them. And But I could select these areas if I wished. Um, I, but I to, and to do that, I would need to hide my routes. Um, and I can then select these different areas. Um, I have actually previously downloaded some of these and so that's why they're still here um, and actually while we're there this is a really good example of where a tidal model is doing a, um, a great job this is the 4k res um, and this we get a lot of tidal effect here between the um, the Tasman and the Pacific Ocean here and um, and you can see that that tidal current pushing around there and if you are approaching New Zealand, um, you know, this is the kind of information you want to know. This can be a very, very dangerous place um, if you get the timing wrong. So, yeah, so we have this all around the world. And you can see we have all our grub areas, um, you know, all the different grub areas all around the world, the same as what we looked at on the coverage map. And we can download any of these areas um, and have them available to us to either view in here or to put wherever you wish. So that is the offshore app. I will just quickly show you that it's basically the same as how you'd normally use the offshore app. You'll see here we have the uh, predict wind tidal currents. So this is where we would select them. OBI, which is um, around Great Britain there, uh, Northern Europe. Uh, that's where the OBI model is. So they're both tidal, see tidal, tidal. Uh, and then RTOFS, HICOM and Mercator, they are all ocean current models. So you can down, you can have all of those, look at them all. Um, but yeah, we're really here to talk about tidal currents today. So I will stop sharing my screen there and we will wrap that up. Um, yeah, thank you for coming along and having a, a bit of a listen to our um the information about our tidal current modeling. If you do have any questions, reach out to our support team. Uh, they are there to help and, you know, 
uh, answer any questions that you have. So yeah, thank you very much and have a great day.